Hi everyone, welcome at the Microsoft Azure Training Day. Uh, I'm glad to have you all on board today for a full day of AI trainings. Um, before we go on, let me present myself and who I work for, and then we'll go over the agenda of today, and then immediately we'll start with our first session. So, my name is Sami, um, a happy husband and father of two. I'm senior consultant and partner at Arinti. Well, I wouldn't be here without being passionate about data and AI. And because of that, I'm also doing a lot of community work. Uh, I'm core member of Data Minds, which is a Microsoft uh, data platform community here in Belgium. By the way, I'm based in Belgium. Um, also Global AI Community, which is a global community where like-minded people uh, share sessions uh, and so on. Um, in the Global AI Community, I'm also the host of the AI Talks Live, a bi-weekly, sorry, a weekly uh, live YouTube show that you can follow. If you have any questions during the session, please don't hesitate to send me a Twitter message uh, or even already follow me on Twitter on my handle at Sami Depre. Um, you can always contact me and I'll try to answer you as fast as possible. Although this is a virtual meeting and pre-recorded videos, hey, I'm, I'll be your trainer for today and I'll be open for any questions. Now, before we go on, let me introduce also the company I'm working for, um, Arinti, and we are a, a Belgian-based firm, which we call ourselves an Applied Artificial Intelligence Solution Provider, which... In other words, we like to say that we um, that we want to bring AI solutions to customers, but not just bringing them the AI model, all the statistic stuff, but we want to bring the whole integration of it also. We want to make sure the model works in their environment and that it's being able to communicate with their with your backend systems. Now we do many different things. Um, we start from the easier stuff, you could say. We do uh, voice and chatbots, conversationally, I how they call it. We work on the more advanced deep learning and machine learning models. We uh, give trainings and all those things like right now. And of course, what is also very futuristic is humanoid robotics, and we do developments on that. If you want to have more information about specific projects we did, or visit our website www.arinti.ai. All right, our agenda for today. So, our first session, making sense of your unstructured data with AI. Well, it's quite interesting one because we all have a lot of data somewhere stored in a folder, but how are we gonna work with it? Second one, using pre-built AI to solve business challenges. What does Microsoft already have that we can reuse within small applications? And then how we can make our machine learning models, how we can make them quite fast. And it's not always that difficult as you think. This is all for this morning. This afternoon we will do three different other sessions. We will take we'll build the models that we have and we'll bring them to a next level. We'll increase their efficiency. And after building all those models, well, we want to have a decent way of bringing them into production. We have DevOps for software development, but you have also DevOps for data science or other people who would call it MLOps. And then our last session for today will be about automated machine learning where someone with little limit, little knowledge of machine learning can even build a quite awesome uh, machine learning model. Okay, so our first session of the day. Let's talk about making sense of your unstructured data with AI. Again, you have my Twitter handle. If you have any questions during the day, please don't hesitate to ask me. Now, we'll start with a little story. Now, you are a developer and you're a very hard working professional. Very hard, works really, really hard. And then your boss comes to you. And then you're like, okay, since you're a good worker, you, you give him an air 
and you want to listen to what he is saying. And your boss said, well, you know, yesterday evening, I was looking around at the database. I was trying to learn a bit of SQL and I think I pushed the wrong button and the database is gone. And you're like, um, what? What did you do? And then the boss says, well, actually, you know, I even promised the owner we would get it, the data back. Okay, okay. Uh, and the backups? Yeah, I removed something. Oh, okay. But you know, don't worry. I've kept all the files that we need. They're all PDF invoices and all the data is here. I have, I still have everything. I've worked the whole night on putting them in different folders per year. So they're all there. It's 10 years of data, but it's all nicely separated by year. Okay. Okay. Still you're like, how am I going to do this? He just removed that full database with all those details. But you know, as a boss, the boss is also, but you know, the invoice numbers are also in the file name. So I don't think it should be that hard. And there's a lot of files. But then your boss just says, just use AI. How hard can it be? It's not a sentence we've heard more often. Just use AI. It's like it, the solution that immediately pops up for everything. But yeah. Your boss said, just use AI. I read somewhere it can solve everything. And then you later on, while you're refreshing up your resume, because you're like, how am I going to do that? And this is going to be a project for my next couple of months. And then you realize, yeah, that it's going to be not the really nicest job. If you like this, like, pfft. but then because of that, we want to give you a nice solution. We brought you now the problem. And because of that, we're not going to bring you a product today, but a service as your cognitive service. Now, now imagine you can have a service within your organization where you can search through all different kinds of documents. Let's say the Bing of your organization. You just look up certain keywords and it will bring you back the documents you're looking for. Well, Azure Cognitive Search can do this. And the nice things about it is you have keyword search, faceting, language analyzer, and many different languages geospatial support like for example if you have data with let's say uh, we are looking for specific hotels within a certain region auto suggestion autocomplete and customizable scoring and so many more different things so about what kind of data are we actually talking well let's have a look well all different kinds of files and now we were talking in the the story about pdf files but you know, in our organizations, we have Word files, we have maybe web pages, we have scanned PDFs, because there's a big difference between scanned PDFs and generated PDFs. We have PowerPoints, we have images, photos, we have flat files. There's so many different kinds of files that we have. To start with Azure Cognitive Search, we need to think in a certain pattern. And that pattern starts with ingesting. So we will ingest all the data that we want to search through. We will enrich it by making use of the cognitive skills. And because of the cognitive skills, we will add annotations or metadata to our documents. And then as last step, we will explore our data. Now let's zoom in on the three different steps. We have again, ingest and we have our source data and we will start document cracking. We will, <coughs> we will go through specific cognitive skills and we'll build a list of different steps that need to be uh, used to get to an enrichment of all your documents. We will build a pipeline of different steps. And after that, well, we'll go through being able to search through 
all the documents and their metadata. Now, go back to the ingestion. What kind of connectors do we have? Well, there's a, a nice amount of uh, storage accounts, storage connectors that are there. Classic SQL Server, uh, no SQL types like a Cosmos DB, Azure Table Storage, the classic MySQL, um, Azure Files, Azure Data Lake Gen 2, and a classic Blob Storage. So this kind of connectors or this kind of data sources can handle quite a lot of different types of data. And then on format file, uh, formats type of data, again, there we have a different number of types. As we discussed already, PDFs, images, even X XMLs, and so on. Document cracking starts, and we will get text, metadata, and images. That's the first step. Now, the next step is using cutting edge AI to get more data out of it. Because by classically, okay, an image from a photo, we can extract an image of it from a PDF. It might be an image or certain text that we can easily extract with any other tools. But we want to get more data. So by using the AI tools of Microsoft, we can get who's on the picture, for example, or in what language is the document written? Or um, if it's a picture, for example, while well, I'm living in Belgium, for the atomium, uh, it will recognize it's the atomium. Is the text in a positive sentiment or are pe people talking badly? All these kind of details can be interesting for your organization to have in this kind of metadata uh, field. So how does it look? Sample skill set. The first parts we will do, for example, in this case, is we will extract the printed text on it. This is step one. At the same time, we will do object detection on the pictures that are there. And a third step might be face detection of people who are on the picture. Now, if we collect all that data together, we merge it into a, a text field, then on that we can ex do a text analytics field uh, extraction, where we could pick out about what organizations is this document talking about, about what location or even what persons are they talking about. Now, it's not always possible to have everything that you want with the default skill sets, but because of that, we also have the option to add custom skills. So to wrap it up, this is the enrichment part. Now, the next step after enrichment is Explorer. So the Cognitive Search API has different ways of being able to query your data. So we have freeform text. We can filter out on specific, uh, specific fields. Like for example, we want documents that are only in English or documents that are only in Chinese and so on. There's fuzzy magic, fuzzy, fuzzy matching. There's uh, range lookups uh, and so on and so on. Of course, wildcards and so on are built in also. So once the cracked data is enriched, the data is all saved in a specific index. And then this index can be searched in a powerful way. So let's just start with a build with a demo and see how things are done and how we can do it. So what are we going to build? Before we start, it's important to recognize what is being built first. So a skill set, it's to enrich the cracked data and the text, the images and the metadata to get the extra data out of it. An index is just the database where the cracked and enriched data is stored and later can be searched through. And then we have the indexer who's actually just a job that looks at every document, crack it open, and then runs the skill set and saves the data to the index. Now let's set up something and see how it's actually done. So we're going to the Azure portal and we're going to cre start creating first a resource group. For so we'll create, uh, put the name, we choose a region, a region of course depends on the area we are living in. Once we, then we go to the resource group, I will create a storage account where we will save some documents in. So we look for storage accounts, we create one. Again, 
we choose the resource group, we give the storage account a name, choose a region, and we just go through the next of the steps to create a valida validation and create. We wait until it's finished. Uh, we go to a resource, click on containers. I will create a container where we can save our files. We'll just give it a, a dummy name now, test. And now we open Azure Storage Explorer, it's, which is a, an easy tool to upload uh, files to your storage account. It can be done through the portal also, but in, if it's bigger, a lot of data, then it's easier to do it through the storage explorer. So we can just copy, well, just drop it into the storage and the data is in there now. So, so we have our storage account. And now we'll create a Azure search or cognitive search, they rebranded the name. We'll give it a name again. Um, again, we, we put a location that is closest to us. So for, for Belgians, it might be West Europe. For the people from Ireland, it might be Northern, I Northern Ireland. Yeah, there's also a region there. So once deployment is finished, we go to our resource. We import the data because now we want to get to the data source and we choose blob storage. Since it's on the same tenant, Azure tenant, it will easily, it's easy to select already the data storage that we just created. We select the container we've created. We do validation. Now it will detect what kind of files are in there. And now the fun part starts. We can add certain cognitive skills. We say we create also a new cognitive service on our, on our Azure. So that's what's happening right now. We give it a name. Again, a location just as all the rest. The pricing and then and what resource group the cognitive service need to be added. All right, we go back to Cognitive Service, Cognitive Search. We click on Refresh and there our Cognitive Service has been found immediately. So we go to OCR, we select all everything we want, all the Cognitive Skills, all the Image Cognitive Skills, so all the data from text and images are extracted immediately by just clicking it on, marking it on. And now we see all the fields that are generated. Now we say create index. This is our index. Now we create our indexer. And here we can give in when, how many times and when it needs to run. Or which files we want to exclude and so on. We'll leave that all by default for this case. We do validating. And our index starts running. You see it's our indexer is running and it's in uh, progress. So if we give it some time, we will see that more documents will be added to the system. And now we have 20 documents already. So now we can just search for something. We'll just say star and we get all the documents that we get back. So you'll see all the text that were in our um, PDF files are now there. And we have text, we have image tags, um, we have people, we have organizations, everything is there. Now, this is of course not yet what we want. It's all nice, but yeah, I'm not thing yet with this, how I am going to do the next steps. Or is this just it? I've analyzed all my images and all the text in my PDFs and it's just there now in that JSON data. Well, it has a lot of use. Uh, we have already seen quite some stuff, but 
we need to reconstruct our database and the defaulting yeah it didn't really work out so what do we need to do now well we need to create a new skill a new skill well let's see we need to create that custom skill that we needed okay let's let's see how we can do that So what we, sorry, so here we have contents of the PDF and all the text and everything, but that's not in a way that we can reuse to create our database again. So what we actually want is something like this, where we have our invoice ID, we have our order date nicely converted in that way. But you know, there's another service that is perfectly made for that. And we can combine them. So for that, we have the form recognizer. The form recognizer applies advanced machine learning to accurately extract text, text, key value pairs and tables from documents. And with just a couple of samples, form recognizers will tailor its understanding to your documents, both on premise and in the cloud, and turns forms into usable data at a fraction of the time and cost. So you can focus more on, on actually on the information than rather compiling it. So how do we do it? Let's start by creating another container where we add our training data for the form recognizer. Okay, so again, we go to our Azure Storage Explorer, where we will add some data to that container. So go back to our files, we'll add some other files that are not the same as the ones we really want to extract. It can be, but this is just an example. All right, we go back to our portal. We, asked, we search for adding a form recognizer in the market. Again, we create it in certain location, specific pricing, how you want it. There's a free tire also, and the resource group you want to add it to. We wait until deployment has been finished. All right, that's finished. We refresh and there it is, our other cognitive service, cognitive service. And there we have all the data we need. We can go to the console because now we need to say what, uh, where the files are to train our model. So we go to train model, see what kind of uh, posts we need to do to get it trained. So we go to Postman. We say, okay, authorization happens through our key. So we copy this. And then our variables, which is our endpoints. That's the, so we can use it within all our next steps. We will copy it from the portal again. This is our endpoints. Copy. And we paste it here. All right. Update. Okay. So if you look now at the body, we need to give in the URL with a SAS value of our storage account. So we can fill in. We go to our storage account. So we need the account name which is the invoice storage, the container which is train, and then our SAS value, we can generate one through the storage explorer. We want to have read access, we set up an expiration date of the item and we qu copy the query string or the SAS key. And there you go. So now our body is filled in and we can send the post request to the 
uh, form recognizer. And now we will see it recognized all the documents that we set in it. And we notice that all of the documents are success successful. And we got a model ID. Copy that one. And again, we will use it as a, a, a variable within our Postman session. So now we want to see what keys are there. And now we see all the different items that it found in the document. And hey, look at that. That's what we wanted. We want company name, email, invoice, and so on. So now let's analyze one document and see what it returns. Well, look at that. We get different elements, bounding boxes of items. So we have name, we have address, we have city. Let's go down. And we have a table with an item 34 with a text 27. And then we have our quantities. And then we get our descriptions all nicely now in a way that we can use. With again also some confidence score if it's really sure that it's really that is really on the text. So <coughs> this is how easily we've been working now from the from a PDF file to recognizing into documents like this, to JSON documents that we can reuse. But now we would like to have that combined with a with with our cognitive service, with cognitive search. So now that it's trained, we want to create that custom skill that is incorporated within the cognitive search. Now, how, we, how do we want to build that? Well, the new skill will extract the key value pairs that we want to add to our index. So what will happen? Well, a custom skill has exactly one job. A skill can be very efficient, but a skill needs to work also in an imperfect world. We know it's not always going to be perfect, exactly the way how it should be done. So the interface has two different items. It has an input, which will be for us the URL of the file, and it will have a simple property of different output variables. So in this case, our invoice ID, um, person name, company name, and the line items of our invoice, of course. So let's go for it and let's create our custom skill. <coughs> so we open a command window and we'll just create a function. Um, this is uh, creating with the .NET uh, command to have a, just an Azure function. And so we can open it to Visual Studio Code. So, and this we'll need to add some extra uh, packages. For example, JSON, we will remove certain items we don't need because we want to start from scratch. <clears throat> So first, we just want to see if our function works. And we run it. This can be done also in .NET Core or any other um, preferred coding language. So we start uh, the function. We do get our post command to it. I will see it returns, hey, it worked. So. <clears throat> first step or function works <coughs> so now with that we we created some extra items where we're calling the form recognizer api we give in all the details of it the api keys and so on all this code um, at the end of the presentations i will share also the urls to it so you can copy it and try it yourself. So we need our model ID also. So here we go. Uh, 
and that's our last step. So what we do is we get the form URL from the request. <clears throat> then we do an, a call ourselves to the form recognizer, get all the data out that we want. And we want to map all the person data, the company data and so on to an object that we want to return. Of course, some error exception and so on. So we'll start the call again, start uh, the function. We give in URL and the storage account. Well, we need to set it up now for our test. So container is now test and not training anymore. And we need to generate a SAS key. Again, set the expiration date to a couple of days further or depending on your use case. Now let's run. We'll see, we got a call with all the details. And hey, look at that. We have all the data from our invoice in a nice and neatly way. Look at that. We have all the details about the person. We have all the details of the different invoices and invoice line. Cool. So we'll create another Kill storage, uh, it's another blob storage on our um, Azure tenant in the same resource group. We will create a function app also, <coughs> a function app in the storage account, uh, in the resource group, and then we will deploy the code, um, publish it to, the, to Azure. So we're just uploading all the data now automatically. So the Azure function is available online, so we can use it within our cognitive search. So there it is, we have our URL. And you will notice we have <coughs> our reader skill with a function analyze invoice. Here we go. It's the same way you can also look at it in Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is a really low memory application uh, for, for development. It's really nice too, um, with ex a lot of extra features. Okay, so if we go to config, we'll also see that the values of our endpoints and our form recognizer key are configured there. So we could also change it in case we're moving to another uh, subscription or other tenant. So we copy this, paste it into our settings. <clears throat> now we want to do the call, but to or as your function to see if that still works. We want to call the analyze invoice and on the same document and just double check if we still get the same response. And hey, they're still all looking great. Now, if we do application insights, we can have a better overview of how many calls are done over your Azure function. And also we can figure out if something is going wrong. Then you can look into error codes and so on. Okay. Now, let's tying it all together. We have our index, we have our skill set, we have our data source and indexer. Um, we have a service that takes our PDFs, extracts the relevant data, 
But now we need to create a skill set. The indexer can use augment or unstructured PDF files. Now, how do we do that? Well, let's have a, a look together. So what we do, we create a blob container because actually we want to get all invoices. Uh, we, we copy the data from or 10 years of data that our boss has deleted from the database. This will take some time and uploading, but no worries, we'll, it's quickly done. <laughs> now we need to alter our skill set of the search service. <clears throat> Adding a custom skill is not done in the portal, but you need to look into the skill sets structure that is saved within a search service. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add that skill into our set. So we, we get, we fill in all the details of our uh, skill set. So we get also the details from our cognitive service and our cognitive service Uh, keys from our um, form recognizer there you go update so you have all our invoices create index so this is how our body looks like so for every field that we want we will need to set up if it's uh, fastable filterable and so on this is what you can do in the portal also, but if you want to put it, for example, in source control, you need to do it this way. So if you look now to our indexes, you will notice we have a second index with zero files. And then in the fields, we will see everything that we added. And hey, we had now a specific fields invoice with all the details of our invoice, the company, the person and the line items nicely structured how we want them in our database. Okay, next step. Now we need to create the pipeline to get there. <clears throat> so we add a custom web API skill set. <coughs> we need to copy the URL, which is already set here. We do a post to it with our form URL, the SAS token, and our output is all the details from the invoice that has been configured within our Azure function. Now we need to go to our search service and now we will see we added an extra skill set with only one skill because actually we don't need the others. We just need the, the image of the document and uh, send it to the form recognizer. And now we need to create a data source, which is actually just a connection to our blob storage. So we'll also see here now that an extra data source has been added. And then of course the indexer, which is linking, tightening all things together. We say, okay, this is our data source or index. And what we see here is that uh, data from the form recognizer, the function that we created needs to be mapped to a specific target field, for in this case, the invoice. After creation, it's automatically getting um, processed and if we look into our application insight we will see that the number of counts that are happening so we have a peak now here of all the calls <coughs> all the documents that are are being uh, analyzed So this is also a good way to debug and figure out what goes wrong. And we see immediately also the responses that happens within the Azure function. <clears throat> because remember the form recognizer gives more data, also the bounding boxes of where the text is located. So we go back to our indexer, 
still in progress, but hey, we already managed to process 711 documents. And if we just do an open query now, we have our text, but look, we have all data nicely, neat uh, within our uh, documents now. So maybe we just want to get the data of the invoices. <clears throat> now we see we have 847 already because we're adding the count. Now we only want to have invoices in Aust from Australia. Was that something <clears throat> that you could do maybe beforehand with your database? Who knows? <clears throat> so with search query, you can figure out many different things <clears throat> without with straight on your documents. Looking for Germany. So it all seems to go very well. So with this we have all the data of our cognitive of our invoices ready to be put in our database. Okay, but it would be very nice if that all that enriched data can also be stored in some additional location, not just any in index. And that's where we have the, the knowledge store coming in. With the knowledge store, we're adding all the data also in another storage. And with that, we could do more analytics on our uh, data. <coughs> Maybe we could do some machine learning on it. We can uh, get some reporting on it and so on. Or human validation, of course. Now, how do we add this? Now we need to define our uh, knowledge store where we want to save our data. Again, this is done uh, within our skill set where we say, okay, the knowledge store, we, in which tables you want to store what data, and of course your connection string. <clears throat> so if you go to our tables, we already had configured this without you knowing it. And here you will see that all our data is nicely stored. We have our people, all the people you were talking about in your invoices. We have all the invoice lines, all the sums or the order dates, everything. So here you go. I think your boss will be very happy that you got all the data back. Now, of course, it's only in these tables. <clears throat> Sorry, but hey, we can look at it in a on a Power BI report. See or see uh, how much sales we are doing, where, uh, and so on. So once all the table is in that storage, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, reco you can reconstruct your database, how it was, uh, create a Power BI dashboard, and so on. So to summarize this session ingestion. We have all the different data types that we can read from. We will crack the data, get image out of it, text of it, and then we will enrich that data with cognitive skills. We have a lot of pre-builds and skills that can be used for text analytics, uh, image classification, face detection, and so on. But if it's not enough, we can use custom skills like the form recognizer that that will be built in within an Azure function that we can call within our skill set list. From there onward, we can explore and search through all our documents, see what information might be interesting, what information is not interesting within our documents. Once we have that, we can save all our data into a knowledge store. And from there onward, we can send it to anywhere or make even reports through Power BI. So with this, we are through our first session. Let's have a short break. Um, and then we go on with our second session. <clears throat>